Hi everyone, Nemo here. Welcome to Mormon Meme Review. If you choose to become inactive or to leave the restored Church of Jesus Christ, where will you go? What will you do? Whatever I feel like I want to do. Gosh! Now, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and stick around. And today, a special welcome is extended from myself and my guest host, John Dolin. John is here with me to look at some memes, <laughs> which I'm really excited for. John, for those that may not know who you are, do you want to uh, introduce yourself real quick? My name is John Dolin. I, uh, I live in the United States in a state called Utah in a city called Holiday, which is near Salt Lake City. I am 51 years old. I'm married. I have four kids. I am probably most known as the host of Mormon Stories podcast, which is one of the longest running podcasts in the history of the world. It's a 16 year old podcast. And, um, and I also have a YouTube channel and now a TikTok channel. And uh, I also am the CEO of the Open Stories Foundation, which is a nonprofit committed to supporting people in religious transition. And uh, I have a tech career before I did all this podcasting stuff. I worked at Microsoft and MIT, and um, I, I did get a PhD in clinical and counseling psychology along the way. I'm not gonna make too many age jokes tonight, but how old do you reckon I was when uh, Mormon Stories started? <laughs> what year was that? Mormon Stories was 2005. You're gonna okay. make me old, so I, tell me. I was baptized that year. Oh, so you were eight. I was eight. Yeah. So I was <laughs> baptized when you started Mormon Stories. Congratulations. I feel old. The, the subtitle of today's episode will be memeing with grandpa. <laughs> right. So should we crack on with some memes then, John? Let's do it. How many Mormons does it take to change a light bulb? Two. Want to change it and want to say nothing was changed. Now, how accurate <laughs> do you think that is, John? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I mean, this is great. I tend to jump right to the seriousness. So you're just gonna have to forgive me. But the, the one of the brilliant things about the, the Mormon church is that they're changing all the time, but they have the members mesmerized into thinking that nothing ever changes. And that's mm -hmm. a real accomplishment. I mean, and, to make and, the amount of changes they make and have the members just it sail over their heads. No, th there's, liter the, there's literally almost nothing that hasn't like fundamentally changed yeah. in significant ways. And yet all the members are like, well, Adam was doing this himself in the Garden yeah. of Eden. The CTR ring that we're wearing in church, Adam wore he the had Garden one. of Eden. Yeah, yeah, little green shield on a bit of stainless <laughs> yeah. steel. That was him. In fact, yeah. his his fig leaf was a CTR <laughs> emblem. Adam and Eve had CTR. Was it, was, it you, was it you or Sam Pinson that put something on Facebook saying name one Mormon doctrine that hasn't changed? Yeah, the, it's probably People were Sam. struggling. Yeah, yeah. They were struggling for sure. And honestly, but, there's a book called This Is My Doctrine by Charles. Oh, what's his name? I'm I'm spacing on his name, but okay. look, look up the book. This is my doctrine. Yeah, yeah. It's a great it's a great treatment on all that's changed within Mormonism. Charles mm -hmm. Harrell. Charlie Harrell. He wrote it as a go. BYU professor. Great meme, great meme. Great meme. Him. That's it, yeah. Number that's two. Number two. God performing miracle after miracle. Humans invent camera. God. Well now I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yes. you got a little picture of Pingu yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Except, although if we lower the bar enough, then we do still see miracles. Like it was this last conference where Elder Rasband said the power coming back on constituted a miracle. So if you lower the bar within the realms of physical possibility, then yeah, we get miracles all the time. And ironically, I was listening to Sam Harris. I, I don't listen to Sam Harris regularly mm -hmm. just because I'm so busy. But Neil deGrasse Tyson was on Sam Harris recently. Okay. And they talked about, is there intelligent life in the, you know, is there, are there extraterrestrials or whatever? And they were talking about UFO sightings and, and they, Neil deGrasse Tyson made this point that the number of claims of alien sightings has declined proportionally to the rise of the availability of, of cell phones, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, the angels who send the sentinels will stop me from entering polygamous heaven. False. I know all the secret handshakes with their accompanying names and signs. Are you, are you familiar with The Office? That's Dwight, right? Yeah, you've watched The Office, right? I, I'm, not, I'm not that Excellent. old. <laughs> I was a temple worker. I know all this by heart. I don't know about you. I don't know how much you still remember. How, how long has it been since you've been to the temple? Wow. Uh, I probably haven't been to the temple since like 2006 or 2007. Wow. Okay. But, but I, I've got, you know, one thing I can say is that I went through uh, prior to 1990. So mm -hmm. I remember 
some penalties that that many of you will only know through the good work of new name noah mm -hmm. and youtube so yeah, i've yeah. done i've done the throat slitting and the disemboweling mm -hmm. but, but i remember it all very very well i was yeah, one yeah. of those one of those <laughs> uber mormons that that proud prided myself in remembering it all right but the key thing is if you were to enter or try to enter heaven would you be able to pass the test now yeah mm -hmm. yeah i sure would and then i would be like laughing at the fact that there was a handshake test well, yeah all. so what is the point then because you're able to get in despite the church having made it very clear you're not welcome by excommunicating yeah. you can you imagine i show up i'm like i'm ready to do the handshakes and they're yeah. like oh oh john knew him so we got to let him in even though <laughs> We excommunicated him, yeah. but bummer, he knew his name. Ah, oh, done it. <laughs> Should have done one of those memory wipes on him, you know? I don't believe that God is waiting to let us in or not let us in based on that knowledge. Doesn't seem yeah. right to me. It's it's really it's really ridiculous. And then when you add that they're just literally cribbed, they're stolen. Joseph stole them mm -hmm. from the Masonic Lodge, which has no inspirational foundation. It's super yeah. silly. It makes God look super silly, right? So what about all the Freemasons that are now going to try to get to heaven? I know they're going to be, they're going to, they get a free pass. It's going to be some explaining to do. It's like that scene in South Park, isn't it? Where they're all, they're all in hell. It's Mormons, the Mormons and Masons. The Mormons are the correct answer and the Masons. Exactly. Yeah. Joseph saved a lot of Masons. I mean, that's a, that's a strong play. <laughs> eternal life i'm not sure it should be guarded so frivolously you think god would have at least encryption right at least he'd have 128 bit encryption on his uh <laughs> his security protocol yeah it's like god's getting little pop-ups from norton saying like your security's weak <laughs> today i made a covenant to be a disciple of christ to obey god to keep all of the commandments and to always follow the prophet Today, I also lost a tooth and can't wait to see how much I get from the tooth fairy. <laughs> oh, you don't know how passionately I feel about this. this is like, this is hilarious and like really tricky. Really sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's just like, I'm all about informed consent. It took me 15 years to realize that the, the it all boils down to informed consent mm -hmm. and yeah. and freaking eight-year-olds literally cannot consent to anything they're yeah. promising you know you're locking them into a lifetime you know i i was you know i, ha I was on leah remini and mike rinder's podcast mm -hmm. the scientologists and you know they're talking about you know scientology and the billion year commitment and of course that makes us look silly like oh mm. Yeah, we, we don't have a billion year commitment, so we're not as bad as Scientology until I realized, no, wait a minute. We have an eternal commitment. It's worse. Yeah, it's it has no worse. expiration date. So this little girl is literally coveting to be a plural wife yeah. of, of a God up in heaven to yeah. birth billions of spiritual children endlessly. Yeah. And she has no idea what she's signing up Although, for. Well, to be fair, she is seven years shy of her 15th birthday. So <laughs> by Mormon standards, it's so fine. Even, so she's even too young for Joseph is what you're saying. <laughs> Essentially. Wow. Yeah. It's, I, I feel very passionate about this. And actually, I just kind of sail in off the back of what you've done by bringing the word kind of informed consent into the game. By making that kind of my platform too, that is very much why I do what I do is informed consent. People deserve to know. And then they can do what they want. I don't care. But you can't say that an eight-year-old is adequately informed. It just doesn't doesn't add up to me. You know, when the, when the Mormon church did that, that horrendous, heinous November 2015 policy, mm -hmm. You know, we were all just like the fact that like, oh, a kid of a same sex married member can't get baptized and can't, you know, if, if it's a boy, he can't get the priesthood and can't join until he's 18. Of course, that was outrageous on 20 billion different levels. Mm -hmm. And there was a really good argument to made that's like, hey, no one can join the church until they're 18. And like, that should be the policy for everyone. Not only should the November 2015 policy have not been rescinded, which it was, which was problematic in its own right mm -hmm. for other reasons, it should have been universally applied. <laughs> yes, that, the problem was that it was exclusionary, not the sort of barriers it created. No, absolutely, because we, we, we really need informed consent. The only way to do that is to have adults involved in this conversation. Let's go on to the next meme, which is about expectations of profits. I know where this one's going. <laughs> I, I already know what the, I can't read the words and I know what this meme says, but go ahead. So expectations of profits over time. They literally have meetings with Jesus and God. 
They are basically as righteous as humans can be. God will never lead you astray. Sometimes they'll lead you astray, but it's not a big deal. Of course they don't have a greater conduit to God than anyone else, silly. They weren't any worse than other people in their time. Sure, they were worse than most people, but I've received personal revelation that they are still prophets. Yeah, I love, I love it that it ends that they were worse yeah. than people on their time because anything, anything stopping short of that would not be going, wouldn't going be complete. far enough. Yeah. <laughs> Once Joseph stepped over that boundary of having, essentially having sex with underage girls, at that point it's like right. Well, he was worse than probably about ninety percent of people around him. Everybody's like, oh, but like technically it was it was legal to be married at 14 in some counties. And I'm just like, really? There's a lot of stuff you can do technically that's morally not okay. Surely he had problematic behavior for his time mm -hmm. or he would not have been assassinated by a mob. When, when they tired and feathered him, was there not a doctor there ready to castrate him? Because of- Am I misremembering that? Allegations of sexual impropriety, right? right? Yeah. Like, there literally is no way to interpret the life of Joseph Smith under any other framework than that of sexual predation. And and even by 19th century standards, probably especially by 19th century standards, he was a sexual predator. Yeah. So yeah, the bar's got to go below the line. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how you see this slippery slope in people's views of, of prophets, particularly now. You know, I've just had a conversation with my state president where I've been like, well, Russell M. Nelson lied. You know, because I registered a, an opposing vote, and he was like, "Yeah, but I don't think that is uh, grounds for him not to be able to be the prophet." It's like, but, but, but well, then what is if, if lying to the membership of the church knowingly, repeatedly? If that isn't grounds for someone saying, "Hang on, I don't think this guy should be a prophet," then what is? But then all you have to do is look to the first prophet of the church to realize you can get away with some pretty mental stuff, and people will still go, "Yeah, no, he's my prophet." Forger, fraud, murderer, prophets, seers, and revelators. <laughs> the Holy Ghost will protect us against being deceived. We must keep the commandments, pray for guidance, and we must never do anything to drive away that spirit. Specifically, we should avoid pornography, alcohol, tobacco, and drugs, and always, always avoid violations of the law of chastity, or do things with our bodies that drive away the spirit of the Lord and leave us without our spiritual protection against deception. That was Dan H. Oaks, October 2004 General Conference. So, so which which was it? W w were Boyd K. Packer, uh, you know, Marion G. Romney, Gordon B. Hinckley, Spencer B. Kimball? Were they masturbating, looking at porn, doing drugs? Were they having prostitutes? You know, were they? You know, which which were their sins? <laughs> yeah, what vice was it? <laughs> little Factory. I'm I'm voting for Little Factory. I, I think a man that talks about the Little Factory so much is yeah <laughs> is compensating, right? Yeah, and Kimball, he, he couldn't stop talking about masturbation, and he even tied it to homosexuality, which mm -hmm. we never know if there was projection in that. No, it's, right? it's he, that whole thing, he protesteth too much. <laughs> he protesteth <laughs> a little bit too much. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else to say about this, to be honest. It's just quite <laughs> ridiculous. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. There's a really great page called Book of Moron Stories on Instagram. They do funny memes. They've taken Russell M. Nelson's Lazy Learners and Lax Disciples talk and flipped it on its head. Being an actual prophet takes work. You have to actually prophesy and give useful, helpful guidance from God. <laughs> Lazy and lax prophets who aren't actually communicating with God always struggle to muster even a particle of useful revelation. Instead, they change the name of the church, oh. shorten church to two hours, wow. and change its logo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And administer marketing research, you know, mm -hmm. like how about those super long protracted, you know, surveys that they're administering like mm -hmm. on a weekly basis to well, I, mean, I don't know if you've seen the video I did on my channel. They sent me a survey. Oh, you got they, one. Yeah, and they paid me ten dollars to do it. <laughs> I didn't see it. Yeah. They get they sent me an Amazon gift card for ten dollars, and that's where I bought my horse back here. I've got a I've got a horse. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's, the church, yes, I love I love those horses. His name is is Daniel. No, I love that they apologies. paid you. How did Moses come up with the Ten Commandments without Qualtrics? I don't know. I don't know how. <laughs> that we spend so much time denigrating the councils of Nicaea and we say, oh, we are not a church run by committee. We shouldn't have revelation by committee. But then they send That's out surveys yeah. to their yeah. members 
Yeah, it's almost like, I, what are they doing with those surveys? What are they doing with the information? Because the information have to say, you're racist, you're sexist, you're homophobic, you're mm -hmm. old, you're behind the times, we're all mm -hmm. terribly bored. What yeah. do they do with that information when they get it? Well, I just wonder whether there's like a threshold and if it doesn't pass a certain threshold, they're like, well, everything's fine. Oh, it's only 45%, we're good. You exactly. Know? <laughs> only 45% of our members are bored and really see through all of our crap. So that's fine. Maybe this came from a survey. If we go to the next meme. First Presidency announces changes to General Conference. Beginning with October's General Conference and continuing thereafter, the Saturday evening sessions will be discontinued. Previously, a Saturday <laughs> evening session was held for women in October and priesthood holders in April. This change is being made because all sessions of General Conference are now available to anyone who desires to watch or listen. Well, what do you make of that? <laughs> well, this is a, is this is this just the, this is the actual. This is the actual thing I got in this my. This isn't a joke, yeah. but it's this a isn't joke. a joke. Yeah, <laughs> I, th I think I'm stealing this from RFM, but I think the logic here is is that if if a meeting isn't necessary, if I'll attend. Yeah. then all meetings where everyone attend aren't necessary. Exactly. If exclusivity <laughs> it was the only measure of whether it was valuable, then I've been sitting through four sessions of conference far too long. There was a time when only men could attend the third session on Saturday mm -hmm. of general conference. It was a priesthood session. And then Kate Kelly does this huge march with ordained women and makes this huge stink about why don't women have a conference, which of course it didn't occur to God for 150 plus years that women, you know, Maybe women have some things they can learn in their own session too. Mm -hmm. Why are we, why are only men getting, you know, a special fifth session of conference? And it took them years after that to sort of make a change. Like where was God and why did they make that change? Why didn't they just end it then? Yeah. But then they alternate and then all of a sudden they eliminate both, but they give some contorted explanation. I, I think it's really quite interesting that they've done this because they can't be seen to be reacting to Kay Kelly, right? They can't be seen to be actually giving ground to her. Um, but then that whole thing was designed to give women more of a voice. And then all they've done is remove women's voice from conference. At the last conference where there was a priesthood session, we had two female speakers. That was it, right? So now to take away the women's session, is every conference now going to be like that? Have we moved backwards? <laughs> the church needs 10% of your income to help people in need, right? <laughs> to help people in need, right? <laughs> oh, I get it, I get yeah, it. So she's face. like, oh, oh, that face. She's like, wait, what? <laughs> you mean it's not going to people in need? Because that's what everyone thinks, right? Surely. Everyone must think when they donate their money that it's going to help people in need. And we know categorically that it isn't. There's this guy named James, Hunts James Huntsman. Does that mm -hmm. name mean anything to you? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's trying to get his money back. <laughs> So like, yeah, so James Huntsman is actually a personal friend of mine. Okay. He, he goes back uh, several years. He, when he was like processing his Mormonism, he started listening to Mormon stories and we became friends. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, yeah, the story comes out. The numbers are revealed that there's 120 plus billion dollars. Mm -hmm. That's just like gaining interest. And, and, and none of the only two things that that money has been used for has been to bail out a failed insurance company mm -hmm. and to buttress yeah. the budget overrun of a consumer shopping mall in the United States. Other than that, they haven't touched it. There's yeah. no there's no global famine. There's no water crisis. There's no global pandemic. There's no need for that money. What we have to do is bury that talent mm -hmm. as far as we can underground because Jesus said, bury that talent. Don't you dare use it, right? <laughs> I don't think so, but they like to use the parable of the talents to justify this, but they completely misunderstood it. I don't think Jesus was saying, yes, take that talent I gave you and go stick it on the stock market, right? That wasn't his advice. And I, I've, so I've done a video on this. I've gone through their justifications and I've just called BS on each of them. Um, and then I've also started a petition. I don't know if you know about this. So oh, I started. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, I think you should have. Yeah. I think I probably have. So we started a petition. Um, it's hit a thousand um, signatures now, which is good, and hopefully it will continue to build momentum. Basically, explaining that in the current way the church is operating, they could, <laughs> they could run the church off the interest from their fund, and we could all give our tithing money to charity and do seven billion dollars of good in a year. The next meme. We got really We're, serious, we've, but we've that's really a got, big deal, right? Fine. Yeah. Jesus, love one another, people. What if they're immigrants or gay or poor? Jesus, did I stutter? He didn't. Jesus didn't stutter when he gave that instruction to people, right? Why is it yeah, so difficult? Just this week, 
they they have excommunicated a couple, a believing faithful couple mm-hmm. who literally inexplicably as gay Mormons in a super homophobic church by any standard, they still believe in the church. So they're still attending. Let's just jab them in the eye mm. by excommunicating them when they're defying all reason Ridiculous. by remaining faithful members. The church should be grateful. The church should be sending them surveys and asking them, okay, so what are we kind of accidentally doing right that you're sticking around? Yeah, well, they should be doing something to keep hold of them. They're like, guys, we've got a golden goose here. We've oh, got people that yeah. defy every, every perceived notion about us. They are a PR dream. And what does the church do? Uh, I don't know how to deal with this, I'm uncomfortable, let's just get rid of them. It is better that one man should perish than that a nation should dwindle and perish in unbelief. Good thing Nephi killed Laban. Imagine if the Nephites had dwindled and perished in unbelief. Nephi goes, kills Laban, kills him off, done. Oh, that was to make sure the Nephites didn't dwindle in unbelief. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like that Spongebob meme, it's like 600 years later and then you've got <laughs> You've got the Nephites all being wiped out by the Lamanites and having to bury up their records in a hill for yeah, some farm boy yeah. to find. Right? No, so what I was mean, God on playing one, at? On the one hand, God's consistent by being a genocidal, mm-hmm. homicidal maniac. On yeah. the other hand, he's being super inconsistent. But then, but then how, did, how did Nephi not see this? Because Nephi is shown a vision of the destruction yeah. of his people. Yeah. So how did he not go, well, hang on. They're going to get destroyed. God's shown me that. But he's also saying that it's better that I kill this guy than that happened to them. So, uh, like, if I were Nephi, I'd be like, what? Which one is it? Am I saving my people or are they going to get destroyed? And if uh, so, why am I chopping this guy's head off? <laughs> Emma, I'll bet he's thinking about other women. Joseph. A little bit of Helen in my life. A little bit of Fanny by my side. A little bit of Flora is all I need. <laughs> Oh my like, gosh, it's a little bit old. It's a dated reference. I, I'm surprised you know that song, by the way. <laughs> it was actually on the radio today at work. It's it's an older song, but it's the meme song. checks it's out. A, yeah, no, 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 it's, it's solid. It's a super solid song. I'm glad you sang it. And it's hilarious <laughs> and it's super dark, right? Yeah, it is. It is it's, it's, it's funny, but it's, it's got a dark twist because you think, well, hang on, this could have actually happened. Emma's there like, what's going on? And he's there. <laughs> having relationships that she knows nothing about with other women. Woman, where are those thine accusers? Oh. They're hiding in the church and will not let me enter. They're just hiding away in their little church, refusing, because you were there, right, John? Oh yeah, And I, I listened there. to your debrief, and so we won't, we won't go into masses of detail, but I think it's just important to, to continue to talk about the fact that they were acting cowardly. They acted like the Pharisees. They just hid in their sort of ivory tower and, you know, I don't want to say poor Natasha because she's a strong woman, but you know, I feel I feel bad for her going through that, obviously. You know, Natasha went through a lot. That mm-hmm. that was way too much for any person to bear. And the way that the the way that the church has has protected pedophiles mm-hmm. and rapists and yeah. sexual predators, I mean it makes sense that a church founded by a sexual predator mm-hmm would protect sexual predators. It makes every sense the church would do that because to call it sexual predators is to call it your founder. Mm-hmm. But it it's just the two centuries long record of abuse victims in this church. You know, yeah. uh, the Boy Scouts have nothing on us. Or the Catholic Church. I mean, maybe they're worse than us. But I would think so. I think it was a little bit more systemic. Whereas yeah. I think I think in, in our church, there's a lot of individuals and it reminds me of something I, I saw quite a while ago. It says that it's not that everyone in a church is a um, is an abuser or a rapist or a pedophile. It's that the church creates an environment where those sorts of people can flourish. And I think that's a really, that's a really good way to kind of look at it is that we that, that at the moment it is a system that protects people like that like you said because otherwise you end up calling out the church's founder when you say well hang on it's not appropriate for a man you know possibly in his 30s to be with a very young girl in an office alone it's like but hang on joseph was married to a girl of a similar age at a similar age gap so what we can't pot kettle black sort of situation we can't call that out without harming joseph's reputation but wait john john what's what's that sound i think it's the sound of a bonus meme headed our way. Check out the bonus meme. I love bonus memes. Okay. Oh, wow. I made a meme. (laughs) I've been memed. You know, but not many people have actually made memes about you, John. Like I Googled John Dillon memes and there's not actually that many. So people get out there, get pictures of this man, make great (laughs) memes. 
Like this one, helped thousands stay active despite their Mormon faith crises. Gets disciplinary action for leading people astray. <laughs> How do you react, John? I mean, it's so, I don't want, you know, I, it's hard because listen, I, I, uh, people are really generous and kind. Uh, you know, just, I've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to help the Mormon church out for a long time. And I've been trying to help Mormons out. And, and just to be serious for a second, I actually am one of the weird ex Mormons that loved his Mormon experience that I just loved growing up in the church. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've super benefited from the church. So I have so many good feelings for the church, which is literally why I've spent the past 20 years trying to help the church and Mormons. Mm -hmm. But so people are so kind and generous about how I have tried to help people in faith crisis. I, I did do a PhD in the LGBT Mormon experience and I did give a TED talk trying to prevent LGBT suicides of Mormons mm -hmm. and, and to help the church have a better policy for its LGBT members. I did support ordained women and try and help women have a better status in the church. Like I really have been trying to help yeah. not just Mormons, but, but the church be healthier and do better. Mm -hmm. And, and I do believe in, in Jesus's admonition to leave the 99 to go after the one. And I've tried, I, I, I'm, I'm flawed in a billion ways. I've made a billion mistakes. I am, I am feet of clay all the way down, legs of clay, and I have honestly tried to help. And it is so bizarre, you know, that, that the church is excommunicating, like Peter Bleakley. Mm -hmm. The church is excommunicating its, its best friends, its most adoring supporters. Because wh what is more loving than to give constructive criticism that will help yeah. You know, you, it's it's mm -hmm. a sad thing that that actually in 2021, excommunication means you've been super effective at helping the church try and do better. Mm -hmm. That's how you know you've been effective at helping yeah. the church do better. And what's bitterly ironic is the church will make the changes and then just punish you and smear you and demean you mm -hmm. as the way to thank you for calling them to attention to their problem. Well, that wraps up Mormon meme review, John. This is super fun. I'm sorry I talk so much, but I no, love it. No, it's fine. It's, it's fine. I brought you on for a reason so that we can <laughs> you know, hear your perspective on these things. So did you enjoy it? I loved it. I think this is brilliant. There we go. Yeah. Excellent. And you do this how often? Uh, just whenever I feel like it. <laughs> okay. Well, kudos to you, Nemo. Uh, this is your channel is brilliant. Everybody loves it. It deserves all the accolades and growth. And I just want to say sort of metaphorically and physically, literally hats off Thank to you. you. Hats off to the entire uh, Mormon and post-Mormon British invasion. I'm a huge Beatles fan. I loved the 1964 British invasion. And I love that there's a 2021 British invasion happening uh, yeah. with, 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 Brit with British Mormons. Uh, I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to be part of this movement. I think it's it's brilliant. And we're having an in-person Sunstone in September, uh, which is really exciting. I mean, John, open invitation if you want to come over. Absolutely. Um, but we're having the UK Sunstone, which, you know, it's really starting to pick up mass. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe. Make sure to go over and check out John's channel. Not that he really needs the press, but, you know, he's, uh, he's doing all right for himself. But make sure to go check out the work that John does. If for some reason you've been living under a rock and you don't know who he is, you don't know what he does,